last speaker, last but not least. 2018 was a challenging year for blockchain. Many believe blockchain is at an inflection, uh, inflection point, which, uh, with momentum shifting from blockchain tourism and exploration to the building of practical businesses applications. In the recent State of Blockchain report, Deloitte found that despite enterprise digital respondents' interest in blockchain capabilities, nearly 39% of the broad global samples say they believe blockchain is overhyped. According to the recent State of the Startups report by First Round Capital, 87% of founders are blockchain skeptics when it comes to their industry. Less than 1% say it's been revolutionary for, revolutionary for, them, for their or their peers. Only 13% believe uh, it will be a dominant technology player in their industry in the future. Intriguingly though, despite industry skept skepticism, 50% of founders said they own, personally own cryptocurrency. Uh, to help better understand these trends and to dive into the subject of blockchain beyond the hype, I am honored to present the following guests. Gil Devora, serial entrepreneur, co-founder of The Floor and uh, leading The Floor Blockchain. Uh, Guy Taki, head of Intel's blockchain enabling group. Adam Bengu, uh, CIO and chief architect at Nit Nitromania. Nitromania, yes, I apologize. Adika Monskope, co-founder and head of strategy of Innovesta and Guy Zipkid, founder and CEO of Enigma. All right, let's dive in. We're, I know everyone's kind of late on their time, so we want to get deep into this. So first question, open discussion. What went wrong in crypto slash blockchain in 2018? I will start. So my name is Gil Devora. As you mentioned, I'm one of the co-founders of The Floor. And when you ask what went wrong with crypto and blockchain, so first, let's divide between crypto and blockchain. And then we were talking about crypto, and you're asking what went wrong. We asked to ask who we're asking, the people that were early adopters or the people that just came lately. So, of course, for the people that came lately, so for them, it went wrong. But I think that it didn't go wrong. People, we think, the early adopters, when we start with the crypto, it went up 40,000%. So, crypto has now got to a stage that um, it's stabilized. And I think this is the evolution, and I think this is great if we look at the... The, the behavior of crypto in the last, let's say, year, we see that it's actually stabilizing. So we have to understand that there's still an adoption period. And if I um, may say that, um, you know, one of the things that I'm looking at, I'm checking all the time when I'm looking at crypto, I think we should blame all, our, all of us. We should blame ourselves because we all know that blockchain and crypto is something that is revolutionized and we all want and we believe and we're trying to push and make it uh, the next uh, generation technology. But we all listen to other people what they said. So when we see all the bad press, and this is what went wrong. Bad press, suddenly people that have no Public idea... Public sentiment went wrong. Sorry? Public sentiment went yeah, wrong. So, yeah, this is one. So for example, when you lately, I will give an example. I, I don't want to say it's stupid, I want to say irresponsible people, like Ehud Barak, for example. Suddenly, the guy is an expert on, on crypto, and he said it's a scam. Uh, Jimmy Dimon from uh, JP Morgan, that, of course, is looking for his own benefit because he wants us to go and buy shares, or I don't know his agenda. So when he's coming and saying that uh, it's a scam, it's a Fonzie, uh, um, you know, so everybody thinking, wow, it's really bad. So first of all, let's, especially us, especially the people that are coming from the underground, the people that really believe in, in the world of, of crypto. So we need to understand that we need to help and push the community to move forward. Now I'm coming from, um, uh, I will just continue a little bit, uh, just to understand, we're working with a lot of banks. So we have to understand we that- We have a question about banks. I no, no, I'm just saying, I, I want to continue, but not only that, one of the things, and we'll talk about ICOs uh, as well, I think the, the ICO, all the um, fake companies and all the, all the scammers gave a bad, a reputation for the crypto as well. I think it's uh, as everything that starts as an underground and uh, uh, come to the mainstream, I think regulation will help uh, to make it uh, that it will not go wrong. I have more to say, but uh, let's continue the conversation and we'll add. Thank you. My name is Adam Ben-Gur. I'm from Nitromia. Um, what went wrong with uh, the crypto market? I think uh, uh, if you go now, people start to understand that there is no easy money on this. Uh, when you go into it, you see there are too many coins. But I'm actually interested in blockchain. Crypto is one thing, and we'll talk about it, but people seem that blockchain isn't that important. So, pardon my French, let's fuck crypto for a second. What about blockchain? Blockchain, I think it's up and running. I think it's, uh, there's nothing wrong with the technology. Uh, part of the technology, like crypto coins, is based on blockchain. 
and based on the similar technologies. So the technology is, uh, is known. It's, it, it has been known for many years already, even be, I think from the 80s, if not before. And only when Bitcoin came, it shows that you can monetize this uh, technology. Uh, but right now, when people try to look at it and they see there is too much hype and no, is, no more easy money on this, and, uh, and when you try to uh, invest in ICO, you see there are too many coins and you don't know where to start. So basically, you need to uh, learn this to make money on this. So. Yeah, I think that um, what went right in 2018 and 2017 was the fact that we actually got this technology financed, okay? Amongst all the ICOs, uh, we actually have teams that are right now developing their promises and the technology that they said they would de develop. And in order to rally around a company, employees, investors, uh, design partners, you need money, initial money to develop that infrastructure. So I think that in that sense, it's a good thing that we, uh, we managed to fund some of that um, technology. But the bad thing about it is that we had lots of people bad people from outside of the community who are not ideologists like us come and look at this and say, wow, this is a good investment opportunity. I want to take part in it. I didn't buy Bitcoin when it was $14. I can't now you know, enjoy a 4,000% uh, uh, ROI, so why don't I catch the next coin? And I think that we didn't provide the right tools in order to assess whether this is a good investment or not. Because when you have teams that were like Brad Pitt was the QA engineer of a, of a certain ICO, then obviously it's very easy to conduct a proper due diligence and know whether this is a, an actual team or not. And these uh, scams or ICO lists which are totally fabricated and all that, we weren't, you know, we didn't take that into consideration. We were too concentrated in the actual development of the technology and didn't, you know, raise our uh, kind of heads and see that, you know, there's all this speculation and everything going on. So I think that moving forward, we must be, uh, you know, provide the right uh, tools in order to become uh, an industry that is transparent, that you can actually assess investment de decisions and attract the right investors to fund the right technology and not just the next hype that will just go away. Hi, I'm Guy Tzhaki, leading Intel's enabling team on blockchain and, and I would like maybe to start by putting this distinction between what we talk about crypto, which is one exactly. of the Exactly, that, that is the next question, exactly, so. Yeah, so it's, it's, we're talking a lot, we're having oh, a lot of events around crypto, but if we look at this parallel of, it, of what we talk, call the blockchain for private networks, the blockchain in which is being used, not necessarily for the cryptocurrency world, I actually think that 2018 was a very good year. We've reached the point in which we've all proven that the technology works. We're seeing applications being developed for the crypto world, which makes a lot of sense. When you start looking into the technology and you say, okay, so we get it, the technology works. How do we take it to the next level? How do we make blockchain a key component within a lot of the applications that we see today? We see that there is still a lot of immaturity there. There are issues related to privacy, to security, to scalability. How do you make audits around that regulation? And there's been significant progress in 2018. Uh, we're gonna talk more about that through the panel. But definitely the world needs this progress and closure of the entire loop here in order to make blockchain and Bitcoin a key component in day-to-day -day solutions. So I actually want to build on what uh, Adi said. Um, here's the thing, I don't think, whenever there's a new technology, right, there's a lot of interest, which leads to greed, which leads to bubble. Nothing was new in this case. This is a classical example of uh, putting the cart before the horse, and that's what we've seen. But you know, if we just uh, open the short-term history books, you know, we've seen the same thing with the dot-com bubble and the electronics bubble. Uh, but if you take, if you expand your time horizon beyond the one to two years, more to like you know one to two decades, you can see how influential these technologies are for society. So in general, I really think that's uh, it's a good thing, and it's a good thing that it uh, happened now. So I think we kind of touched this. So. The initial question was blockchain, and most of us talked about coins and ICOs, and again, I'm, I'm part of that industry. So 
is it even able to be separated anymore? Is blockchain cryptocurrency and is, should blockchain strive to not be cryptocurrency because it, can we create a discussion that is, doesn't include both or are they always? They should definitely be separated, of course, because blockchain is the technology and you have like private blockchains, right? Like Intel and public ledgers and cryptocurrency is just the byproduct in order to incentivize the actual maintenance and the actual development and the actual uptime of, of this technology, right? To incentivize the nodes, uh, the miners and whatnot. So we should see uh, an era in which we're building more blocks like second layer protocols on the existing blockchains without having to create our own crypto and to find other value capture mechanisms in order to attract investors to fund that second layer. So for sure it should be divided. Not everyone needs to, uh, to make their own token economy or to build their own blockchain because they just found out you know, how to make it more scalable or more high throughput, but rather to build the next uh, uh, floors of that, you know, that building that we're trying to build. Maybe I can add, um, I think, uh, first of all, we have to educate uh, um, the community and the society that uh, crypto and blockchain is two different things. But I think we should start people using the word blockchain because when you have developed um, any application or any technology on the internet, nobody came and said, look, I'm developing on the internet. I'm, I'm actually developing technology. We should talk about the actual use case what you've developed and what is the use case and what is your, the, everybody will benefit from that. Everybody knows that blockchain, from my perspective, I, I fell in love with blockchain from the day one that I heard no about it. No one says cloud anymore. It's synonymous that it's on the cloud. You don't say it's a cloud company. Yeah, I mean, why to use that? I mean, every, we know that everything is, there is evolution for every technology. And I think the ability to transfer the asset in the internet is something that it's unprecedented. And of course, we know it will disrupt a lot. So I think let's, try, yeah, us, the community, saying that crypto is crypto, yeah, and there's a lot of use of crypto, and of course, you, crypto need the blockchain to, to use the, to, for, to tokenize, but at the same time, let's stop saying blockchain. I have developed a technology that can, and then we can sell it, I think, easier. Why? Because today, especially when you're looking and raising capital, it's all about hype. When uh, there was a, in the beginning, everybody, the same with the internet, you said everything that you came and said, internet, everybody invested. Now in the beginning, everybody said blockchain, everybody was running and invested, even if you develop something that doesn't really have much use. So I think, and today, because of the bad word, people when you say blockchain, they start to think, oh, maybe we should wait and see what's happened. So I think, again, let's stop talking about blockchain. Let's talk about the real technology. Right now, we need to improve and invest and lot the foundation of blockchain, make it, make it more accessible, make it easier, cheaper, that we will all, in the end, will benefit from that amazing technology. So I think we really need a new nomenclature. The problem right now is that when you're saying blockchain can work without cryptocurrencies, it doesn't make any sense, right? So blockchains can happen, at least in their trustless form, because of cryptocurrencies. If you don't have a cryptocurrency to incentivize different players in the network, then the whole system breaks, right? So if you want to have another kind of network that is robust against attacks, well, that's Byzantine fault tolerance. We've known about that since the 80s, but we need a different name for that. That's not blockchain. And it's fine, we can, we can use both, we can develop both technologies side by side, but let's stop calling that blockchain. All right, for us, for example, we developed um, a product, an authentication product, but we use uh, blockchain technology or ledger uh, as part of our solution. Um, so we use it as a tool. And actually, when uh, our company is, uh, is uh, part of uh, the Flow uh, blockchain company, uh, and this collaboration uh, put us in a connection with, uh, with banks as customers. And uh, through the Flow, I hear that uh, for example, banks really interested in this technology, but not in terms of cryptocurrency. Exactly. Yeah, we'll get to the banks uh, in, in, this, in a second. So, you know what? Um, what about STOs? Next big thing, amazing. Is it the best use case of blockchain, or is it just a silver bullet? The industry is looking for another rush. Again, uh, this is something that uh, a little bit bothers me because I see that we all, it's like waves. Now everybody said STOs, ICO, dead, let's go and talk about the next thing. I think ICO was an amazing tool. We all, you know, I'm, I'm trying to raise capital for a lot of companies that I formed and I was part of and I, I used to 
I don't want to say anything against VCs. But I remember going to VCs, you know, the guy is already meeting hundreds of companies, and I'm just one, another one. And he started to listen, and, and try to turn. we had to go and look for, for, to raise capital. And then this tool, this amazing tool that helped us to have an idea, and suddenly you can raise capital from someone in Australia. He can put $500, he can put $1,000. So I think ICO is amazing. I still think ICO should stay. Of course, everything, again, to start from underground and go to the mainstream should be regulated. I do think that ICO, again, we should all fight to make it um, you know, stay, but it will be uh, regulated. I think we should limit the amount of money that we are raising for ICO. So for example, if you want to uh, sell something, you, know, you want to develop a product that you can sell part of the product, so you raise cap capital in ICO, you limit the amount that you are raising. So, and it will be like, a, you can say light uh, IPO. Uh, and I think this is great. I think ICO should be for retailers and STO, which is an amazing tool as well, should be more for the, for the uh, VCs, for the hedge funds, for, for the um, you know, um, people, more institutions that want to invest and get to, to the rest of the companies. I think we need to, and I'm trying to work with the Israeli SEC, uh, to make uh, in Israel that STO will be legalized, that you can do STO in Israel. We're right now working even to push one of our company to do the first STO in Israel. I think it's a blessing. I think, again, this is uh, the new era, and I'm, I'm pro it. I have three things to say about ICOs and STOs. The first thing is I built token economies for ICOs, and there couldn't be one token which is value capture mechanism for the investors and also a utility token that enables some stability for the users. So I think that was the first problem of ICOs. It just, it, it doesn't work. Today you compromise, in order to attract investors, you compromise your, your tokenomics and, and your utility token in order to, to make this work right now. Insert stablecoin new buzzword. The, the second problem, well, that's another topic. The second problem is that um, if we're going to use the same techniques for assessing investments that we use for ICOs, hence just reading the telegram, looking at the medium, or looking at who's sponsoring this, and, and you know, just following some sort of a celeb or an endorser, then we're gonna get to the same, you know, shitty investments that, uh, and it'll just be a security token. In essence, most of the ICOs, according to the SEC, were already security tokens, right? So if we're not gonna change the way that we assess the investment itself and t the opportunity and the due diligence that we're, uh, we're uh, conducting, then the STOs, I think, will have the same, you know, uh, shitty ROI. Um, and the third thing, yeah, beep. And, and the third thing is that uh, I gave this example, you know, uh, the ideologists and the people who wanted to revolutionize the world with the value transfer and with, uh, with uh, blockchain, um, I think the equivalent would be that, you know, the fact that in the information technology revolution, Zara or H&M have like a digital online store, that's, hey, that's amazing, but that is not what made the internet what it is. The internet is what it is because of blogs, without, because of YouTube channels, because of Nas Daily, this guy who's able to, uh, you know, to speak to millions of people around the world. So I think that, you know, the SDOs are very, very important, but they're not going to bring the, what we're setting out to do, the decentralized revolution, because, you know, it's going to, have a very, very important impact on, uh, on you know, the way that you're, you're tokenizing, the way that you can transfer the token and everything, and that is something that I'm very passionate about. But for this audience right here, it's, it's just not gonna work in funding decentralized autonomous organizations and dApps and sorts of things like that. If Bitcoin was funded uh, using an STO, Bitcoin would have been shut down like 20,000 times in the past 10, 10 years. So I think beyond that, I'm, I'm very skeptical about STOs. Um, I think the whole idea of blockchains is really to do trust minimization. You know, uh, Nick discussed that at uh, length earlier today. But if you're looking at trust minimization, um, how, the, how does STOs help? STOs try to bring back all of the regulatory red tape, and I'm not saying that's not important, but if, it's, but if the system uh, complexity is mostly around the red tape and bureaucracy that it takes to set it up, then how our STO is going to be better than what we have today, and where does blockchain help? Like, I fail to see the connection between how blockchain as a technology 
helps us with something like STOs, which by definition requires so much bureaucracy. And I've asked several people who are working on STOs exchanges and are working in the field, and I've yet to receive any, any satisfying answer. And to me, and I really hope I'm going to be wrong because I think the ideal of STOs is really important. The idea that more people can invest and can have uh, more access to information, these are super important. But um, as it stands currently, what I'm predicting is either uh, STOs are gonna fail quietly because the startups in the space are gonna fail to navigate all of the regulatory overhead, especially in different jurisdictions and between jurisdictions, or it's gonna lead to a second crypto bubble, which again would, would even be worse. Okay, that's, no, I, still say I, d I disagree because I don't think STO will fade away. I think the moment the regulation will step in and STO will start to be a tool to raise capital, it will help all the community, it will help the cryptocurrency, it will help the, the community of blockchain. And I, again, I think again, all of us should push that STO will be, in technologies ways as well, would be part of our raising capital. Okay, so, just one thing. So with, with jurisdiction, so if Malta says STOs are okay, but the SEC says it's not, or then if the SEC says in these conditions it's okay, but China says it's not, or Korea says that's okay, how are you gonna, how are you gonna navigate as a startup all of that red tape? The same, the same as IPO started. I mean, this is again, you have to start from one point, and I think yes. it's, I know, I know, but if, if for example today, Let's say if we start doing it here in Israel and in Malta, in uh, Gibraltar, in Singapore, and other countries that are doing that, and in the end you, will, you need to make the other countries following after you. And I think, of course, everybody knows that the SEC is uh, really uh, involved uh, in all this uh, area, so I think we need to bring the SEC as well. But again, it's the same story as an I, as IPO. In the end, you need to make it a mass adoption. And if the community will continue pushing that, so the, the, the regulation must adopt it. Okay, so STOs or DApps or base protocols, or maybe for enterprise, and this is a decent time to plug things that you're doing, but please, what is actually a very good use case that's happening in blockchain right now? What is it, a company, a product, something that's not about building more protocols or more tools? I'm talking about someone's business or life that is being improved right now by blockchain and not by the funding he received. How many people here know about DAI? Just curious. All right, so I think DAI is an, is an amazing use case, right? Like it's a, it's a, a, a decentralized stable coin that is not backed by one entity that no one needs to probe into their banks and audit it because it's all on the blockchain. And it's been working phenomenally well on top of Ethereum for the past year, despite uh, both the, the, the high, I guess hundreds of, of uh, hundreds of uh, uh, percents of price increase, and through the uh, bear market and the 90 percent drop, and it's working. It's a completely pegged stable coin uh, that's just working. Okay. So um, I would say instead of giving maybe an example of a company, I would rather prefer talking about um, a, use case a domain. Okay. And for me, supply chain is a great example where blockchain is a very good fit. Uh, we know it grew up uh, on the technology blockchain. Bitcoin started as a financial technology, but when you start looking at the movement that's happening around supply chain and the need within the supply chain world for transparency, you see multiple applications for that world. It starts from agriculture and goes to mining. And uh, we had... Actual mining. Actual mining, yeah. Uh, we can give examples of automotive companies that are getting a lot of heat from Amnesty because they're not doing enough to make sure that minerals within batteries of electric cars are coming from mines in Congo that don't have child labor. So now they need to start building a solution for that that gives transparency for the car buyer to know that when they're buying a car, the minerals and all the components within the car are coming from ethical mining. So uh, I think the world of supply chain is, is a really interesting world. I would also add that for me, blockchain is a very good door opener. You have a lot of companies that have not done anything in the last five to 10 years on their supply chain. They're starting to hear the world blockchain. They're starting to explore and suddenly they figure out that potentially combining IoT devices into their infrastructure can help them get a more efficient supply chain solution. The combination of the progress with 
the IoT devices with the sensor and blockchain is really great fit. So I would say supply chain is probably the industry that we're going to see a lot more real-time application in the near term with tremendous value. I just wanted to add on what Guy said is that when you look at money and if money money is the infrastructure for all the applications, right? When I'm going in Israel and I'm going with shekels, then I can access and unlock anything. So if you're managing to have a decentralized stable coin that enables you to really have no nation state, no fiat currency on and nothing is backing it, but it's only on the blockchain, I think that is a very good first use case to unlock the rest of the real world problems. Because you can't do anything when the money itself acts like gold and not like actual uh, store of value, right? It's not stable. I think the best use case has yet to come. And uh, soon uh, in the future, I guess we'll see some amazing uh, uh, things done on the blockchain on a uh, similar technology. I guess uh, that in the future, uh, there will be a blockchain uh, managed by uh, government. Our medical record will be there. When uh, we trade the car, when we, uh, we sell, buy or sell a car, it will be done on, on that uh, blockchain uh, technology. I think it's, it's going to be there. Okay, so let's get a bit technical for a second, but I think it's part of this. Let's talk about public and private blockchain. So a lot of people talk about that. Maybe that's the best use case. Blockchain is great. It just can't be that open because I don't think Superfarm wants everyone to know how much they pay for their products. So where does that go into place? You know, blockchain technology, but on the private, and when does it talk to public? Yeah, there, there is this constant debate about public or private and whether even private is even a blockchain. Um, if, if we think about when the technology started, as a distributed technology, uh, and, and the intention or proposed intention of Satoshi to potentially remove intermediates and create this end-to-end -end trust, I think it's, it's a, maybe a noble cause, but it's a noble cause that will maybe come into life in five to ten years. In order to make a progress, organizations that want to get a lot of the benefits that blockchain provide, like immutability, like transparency, they still want to have control over the system. So potentially, Guy, maybe like you said, it's not a blockchain per se, but it's definitely a very strong applicability of, of the technology. We're starting to see focus on the private, the permissioned networks, applications there. And the, the need of control is actually what drives the technology to get more maturity. We provide, we, didn't, we provide building blocks for private networks, but I think we're really helping drive transactions per seconds. We're making the technology more secure, privacy capabilities, which potentially don't exist in the private, in the public world or exist, but maybe in, in, in less uh, um, availability are key. Privacy for private networks, super critical, zero knowledge proof solutions that are starting to be evolving and happening are going to take shape and, and, and impact the privacy world. So definitely, I would say this is what's going to close us the, la the, 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 the gap and give us the sleep towards what the innovators are looking to get in five to ten years. I, I would like to add something. Uh, um, uh, the floor is a partner with Intel, so I don't want to be too rough and uh, complain against it, but I'm really, really against, again, private blockchain. I mean, again, they call it blockchain, but it's just a database that they put in on their own server. I think, again, we should all, and again, I'm talking from the community of blockchain, the community of uh, people that want to come and, and, and use this amazing technology. So we need to strengthen the, the, the technology. I mean, instead of bringing big corporations like Intel and, and, and Amazon and, and Google that will help um, improve the public blockchain, what they're doing in the end, they're doing the same as the internet. In, we want to be decentralized. We don't want to give all this huge cooperation that in the end, they will control our data. All the idea is that we will be able to monetize our data. We'll be able to hold all the data that we have from, as you mentioned, medical, uh, the cars, uh, houses, etc., etc., and we will use it. We will use this big corporation that they will work for us. But what's happened is that all these big corporations, they're smart. They saw this yeah. technology and suddenly what they said, okay, let's do the private uh, blockchain. We will do it stronger and uh, the technology-wise, stronger than the public, and we will be the community slower than them, and then we lose the point of decentralized. So 
what we're doing at the floor, and again, uh, with all the respect, we, 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 are not, we don't have the power of all the big corporations like Internet and Google, but we're really trying to bring companies, we co-founded companies that help to strengthen the foundation. So right now, I think, and I'm always looking for companies that bring in technology to strengthen the, the, the foundation, that huge corporation will come and partner with us, not that we will come and partner with them. So Sorry, I'm going you know, to have to finish with a lightning round, but it's, it's on the same subject, so it's a quick lightning round. Last question, everyone has like one line to answer this. So the floor works with banks, Intel works with the biggest companies, Cyberpunks when they when and Satoshi did they build this to help improve banks and enterprises or is this a complete disengagement or misuse case of of the original or is maybe this is the actual manifestation? Quick two lines. Are we going the Satoshi way or our own way? I mean I'm I'm gonna put banks aside. Uh, look at what's going on here and the name of this conference is Israel Bitcoin Summit. And we're 10 years since Bitcoin's inception. Uh, everyone in the world knows about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is being used daily, and not just Bitcoin, other cryptocurrencies. It's been operating nonstop. It's completely decentralized. I, I'd put that at, uh, in the win column. Sure, there's still a lot to do in the vision to, to achieve the end goal in the vision, but I think we're doing fantastically. I was watching a, a football match yesterday night, um, and. It's the first time I've noticed that on the banners on the football field, there were commercials of companies selling cryptocurrencies, which for me is an indicator that really we've, we've made this, this reach, right? So everybody knows about the technology and there is uh, enough know-how. If you ask me what Satoshi intended, I actually think it doesn't really matter. Uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it didn't mean private blockchains. I'm pretty sure that he was looking for this extreme path, but my position and my vision is that actually it's not either or, it's a combination of both that will bring us to this point in time that we want to be in in a couple of years. It depends what you want to set out to do. I believe that a technology can have many implementations and I guess that the private blockchain is the most boring implementation that we can talk about uh, because it doesn't change geopolitical views, it doesn't change the powers that be, it, it doesn't empower the common people, it doesn't build small businesses, it's just, it, it just, you know, it just makes it more, maybe the, the profit for the investors will be better because they've, uh, you know, reduced their operational costs. Redundancy. And with uh, open ledgers, open blockchains, we're talking about the first time that humankind in many, many, many years, hundreds of years, uh, Hanan Steinhardt is here and has an amazing, amazing, uh, um, history lesson of, of how we got to where we got with money. This is our first time to take ownership on our data, to not be, you know, trusting some sort of state with uh, whether they're, you know, they're printing more money or not printing more money. Th this is a true opportunity and, you know, I don't want to let it just pass by and say, you know what, it wasn't, you know, we didn't have a first use case in uh, 2019. Um. Again, I'm a partner with banks, so uh, it's probably you think that I'm going to be pro-banks. But in general, I think Satoshi thought in everything, in a topian way, everybody will control his money. We don't need a third party and the banks will disappear. So uh, the news that I can bring you, bank will not disappear, but we can all help changing the way they behave, the, the behavior of the banks. So, for example, I do believe 100% that banks will accept crypto. It could be new crypto, it's, we, we, the, when we get to the time that we'll solve the issue of KYC and AML, I mean, all of this will cause the banks to, to adopt their cryptocurrencies. Not many people know, but banks are early adopters of blockchain. Already, uh, there's uh, 100 banks using blockchain, 200 already using Ripple technology, Santander, one of our partner, is, was one of the early uh, investor in Ripple. What we need to do is, we, if we want to benefit from that, that banks will behave differently. I mean, maybe they can be custodians. There are many other things that we can make the banks do with all our digital assets is reduce cost. Think about it. We, in the end, what we want? We want the security that someone, I think I will put my, my crypto 
I prefer to put it in the bank there because I know that I'm insured. I know that it probably will beat the security way that nobody will steal my crypto. But at the same time, I want them. I know that in Ripple it costs so you know less than Swift, and I know it's it's much faster if you want to do transfer of money between nation. So let's not forget about banks and let's continue to develop the technology that help us to 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 do transaction in a fast and cheap way. Thank you. Well, I think the best uh, thing that happened with Bitcoin is that everybody started to talk about blockchain and this technology. And I think this, uh, I'm a technological person, and I think this blockchain or the ledger world is actually opening a, a new uh, horizon of uh, applica possible applications that everyone can uh, use and implement. And I think we are just at the beginning uh, at this stage. Uh, so uh, when I go to the mechanic and he uh, he started to talk to, with me about uh, blockchain and he showed me pictures that he's mining bitcoins at his home, then I think it brings all of us to the next level. Okay, thank you very much. Have a great moonish year.